Welcome ladies and gentlemen, my name is Vedius and I'm here to bring you Picks to Watch. With the introduction of the 10 band system, we may see some interesting picks that you're not necessarily used to, so I want to introduce you to some of those cool and fun champions. Let's jump right into the top lane. One of the more interesting champions that we may see on the new patch in competitive play is Camille. She has a kit that is designed for dueling and killing. Getting true damage from her Q, sustain and CC from her W, as well as an E that allows her to stick to her target without giving her opponent time to react. Now, while her passive shield duration was still nerfed this patch, it still acts as an effective tool that enables her to win out on most trades. Add to the fact that she is exceptional at diving on top of her target and locking them down, she has multiple options moving into the later stages of the game. Therefore, don't expect tanks to be the only machines coming from the top lane. Next up, we have your friendly neighborhood jungle cat that loves to show his affection to all you marksman mains out there. Rengar has been causing some terror on the rift recently due to his surprise attacks and immense burst damage. But this isn't the reason why we could see him in pro play. What makes him stand out as a jungler is his empowered battle rule that allows him to remove crowd control effects while also granting him CC immunity for 1.5 seconds. This makes him an incredibly strong engage tool as well as a potent duelist. It's more likely that we will see him in an off tank style Rengar rather than the full AD one shot type, but that doesn't change his ability to dive onto the backline threats, force them out of the fight and then walk off like nothing ever happened. Now we move our attention to some mid lane madness. Echo is a champion that has been sneaking his way into a few of the pro players' repertoires. For a while now, Echo has undergone a lot of balance changes that have attempted to shift his power from his base stats into his scaling, and now he's reached a point where he packs quite the punch. Often you'll see an early proto belt rush into the Lich Bane to help him in diving onto his desired target and boosting them without a chance for counter attack. His incredible movement speed makes it difficult to trade with the Time Traveler in lane, and even harder to lock him down when he moves into the side lanes later into the game. His ability to roam from lane to lane should also not be underestimated thanks to the wealth of movement speed and mobility options he has in his build and kit. Now, he may not be on the highest priority list, but don't be too surprised if he raises bat on the Fields of Justice. When we move to the bottom lane, the champion that springs to mind is Callista. On patch 7.1, she is now able to regain the mana cost of Rend from only killing one minion instead of two. This enables her to throw out a bit more harass during the laning phase, and on top of this, even if Rend is on cooldown, the spears will continue to stack. This rewards Callista for staying in fights for longer, as well as gives her a few more options when playing around objectives. A recent change that also benefits Callista is the buff to Blade of the Ruin King. This has always been a favorable early purchase for the Lady of Vengeance that is also very effective against tanks. Speaking of tanks, she does a great job of keeping them at arm's length thanks to her martial poise, and also consider how well she synergizes with Thresh, who has also slowly been finding his way back to competitive play. Now, while she may still struggle against the likes of long range AD carries such as Varus and Caitlyn, she has some strengths that may be fully utilized in the right hands. Last but not least is the Prophet of the Void, Malzahar. Now before you get out your torches and pitchforks, hear me out. Malzahar is a fairly weak early laning phase, however, once you get a few levels under your belt, you become quite the menace. Being able to instantly harass your opponents if they take one step too close, as well as his strong ability to push, has made him an interesting prospect for some support players. The real pain point is when Malzahar reaches that level 6 mark and his nether grasp is ready and available to make sure that he is the last thing that his opponents see before they fall. While he's certainly an opponent to respect during the laning phase due to his all-in potential, his ability to peel should not be disregarded. In the late game fights, locking down that pesky assassin to give your marksman the time to reposition is a valuable tool that can make or break a teamfight. He still struggles against the likes of Karma and Zyra, but that's not to say his Voidling companions won't make their presence known. Now that does conclude it for some of my picks to watch coming into the new season of LCS. What do you guys think? Hit me up with your ideas and tell me which of the new up-to-date champions you might think that we may see debut themselves on the stage. Thank you very much for watching.